You can't be in survival mode and be in feminine energy. It's like you can't be angry and grateful at the same time. They, they cross each other out. They, from working for somebody to starting up their own business and you're going through that phase of, um, you know, uh, directing your own day. Like entering um, retirement, we give that transition into retirement such uh, emphasis and guidance. So I wanted to speak to any stay-at-home mothers, stay-at-home wives, anybody embracing their maternity leave time, and anyone who is leaving like the corporate world or leaving the full-time job and working outside the home and returning to work maybe inside the home, anybody who's doing that switch and anybody that is slowing down in life. So I went through this process as well, um, only recently, a couple of years ago, and it's so underrated the impact it has on your life. It's almost like entering um, retirement. We give that transition into retirement such uh, emphasis and guidance and accommodation. But do we do the same for people who are choosing uh, the stay at home or inside the home um, option? Uh, I found it was a big shift. I feel like I wasn't really um, prepared for it. It sounds great at the start, all this free time or time to um, do your own schedule and um, allocate your own time, be in charge of your own time. So this video is also for like entrepreneurs who might be um, going from working for somebody to starting up their own business and you're going through that phase of, um, you know, uh, directing your own day. Aww, look at that. Gonna be. and stepping away from the others routines allocated to you and it's like you're in charge of your time and your day so delving into the topic of masculine versus feminine energy really helped me embrace this slower pace because feminine is more about the being, being present, being in the moment. And that really, really helped me to um, learning about feminine energy and how to embody it, how to be it, uh, was such an eye opener. And it really, really did help me um, cope with this transition. So I'd recommend um, yourself to look into this um, concept. You can't be in survival mode and be in feminine energy. It's like you can't be angry and grateful at the same time. They, they cross each other out. They contradict each other. So I think a lot of the structures and a lot of outside the home work, because you're working with other people and it's like professional work, it's um, really tricky to blend the masculine and the feminine approach. So the masculine energy being action oriented and outcome oriented and results driven and productivity, um, that kind of vibe. So not that one is wrong or one is right, one is better than the other. Um, I think it was the realization of there's different phases in life. It's like raising kids. It's like um, everything is a phase. You have to keep reminding yourself during those sleepless nights and the hard graft, as I call it, the um, like there's no immediate result. There's no the transition is so hard because there's no one to one meeting or there's no like uh, review or somebody patting you on the back. There's no instant recognition. There's no appraisal. There's no uh, bonus pay at the end of the year. It's like this long term. You're investing in a long term future and um, it's a very strate strategic overall approach um, to how you do your and live your day to day life. So I also was watching this um, news um, program and it was all about the latest generation, um, like younger than us and how this big movement of um, like work slow is like in work, um, not working as hard and quiet quitting and um, that the younger generations are all a, a 
um, taking this on. It's a whole new phenomenon. There's loads of like trends happening um, in the workplace that everybody's taking a step back. Lazy girl um, attitude to work and uh, doing the bare minimum, uh, quitting quietly and all this talk and it's like, uh, that could be almost mistaken for feminine energy but uh, you know sitting back being more receptive letting things um, unfold but it takes a lot of confidence and a lot of security faithful you have to just know that okay I'm going to work on these first three years of their baby's life specifically to make sure that they're very I say three as a number but I think that there's some scientific research I read something in around the two to three years is great to form their healthy uh, attachment uh, the baby's attachment with their primary caregiver um, to reassure them that feel safe and secure so they don't later in life have attachment wounds or how they get into a relationship um, it, that they just cope apparently this is the latest research that they cope with better if they have good attachment styles which comes from um being the primary care giver being really attentive to their needs and um helping them model like this is how you handle emotions um so yeah attachment styles is a whole nother topic and that was another discovery um, why and learning about that topic really helps you embrace this time if you're at home with kids um, especially um, it really helps uh, you understand them better you, it helps give you that faith of why are you doing this why is this the long term approach because it's very hard if you don't get that recognition nobody's coming to give you that pat on the back that validation it's all self-directed um where i think by default by just having colleagues uh with you like all those subtle signs and uh the banter with your colleagues the chat around the water cooler or the the coffee uh, chats it's like um the little breaks or the lunch break or the a meeting with your manager and then like somebody asking you constantly how are you how are you getting on what results do you have for me like even that um it does make you feel uh noticed and seen and you have to give that all to your to yourself it becomes self-directed so it's a whole mindset shift so I have another video all about NLP, how we speak to ourselves, our internal dialogue. So that's really interesting to watch and to see because that helps. And uh, now everything is self-directed and you really need to shift your mind as in your, you have to run yourself like a business <laughs> almost now. Um, it's a shift in energy, it's a shift in the pace of life. Um, it, it's in this box because it doesn't get so scared when it when it can see what because it doesn't get so scared when it can't see what what is all around it. Not doing much right now. Oh, there he goes <laughs> into his little box. Oh, what you doing, Peter? house right now and, and after the video I'm just going to change his order. It's just in here. I can't get his face on the video. Like how quick do you get things done? Well no maybe the only thing you need to do that day is bring the child to the playground get them outdoors, make sure their basic needs are met. So it is kind of putting um, the the home or your pets or your children before yourself um, in terms of practical day to day. And then you need to also find time for self care and for you. So yeah, one of the first things to adjust to this 
phase in your life is to realize it's a phase, to shift your mindset, to embrace the slower life. Look up things like hege, which is like being cozy in your home or embracing the seasons. There's this really amazing documentary um, on Netflix all about blue zones, as in uh, centurions who live really long but their lifestyle a lot of them is like embracing that slower life racing nature getting out more and um, simplifying everything is simple clutter free um, not many niche ups like small group of friends simplified diet everything's really simple 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 nothing fussy and this is how they uh, not pure minimal minimalism but because uh, we all like a little bit of luxury like let's admit like luxury is designed to be enjoyed and to be um embraced um that's what it's there for that's why it was designed it can't be a bad thing but too much indulgence obviously so yeah i am changing your mindset changing your pace at which you do things uh realizing the overall goal instead of there's not this immediate um end year goal or mission in life um there's this uh you have to know that you're you have to set yourself up properly so um self-care and routines and like even that might mean financially how are you going to support yourself so when that's sorted and that baseline is covered then I think you can step into uh, this new phase um, yeah a lot of tips are like you're going to have to seek out more um, socialization more than you probably would um if you were working outside the home because your work outside is working with the public and um so you need to set that up for yourself so uh being compassionate and being kind to yourself and really looking at your basic needs as in you do need to socialize so um, instead of i would recommend ordering your shopping in but every now and again go to the shop that will have to be your social social life that will be have to be your colleagues and um, go to the playground chat to other mums be friendly be approachable if you're not rushing about anywhere i think people sense that in your energy and you're a lot more open you're not a lot more willing to chat so a lot of these things will um you searching for your outside colleagues <laughs> whether that's uh, spending more time with elderly relatives or um yeah seeking those um social colleagues or social connections will be easier and making sure to have uh the same way your working day would finish to have that built into your day as well which might not always be it might have to be a lunch break or it'll have to be the weekend or you if you have to get a babysitter or childcare, so be it. Um, you deserve time off as well. Uh, sometimes it feels like you're doing 16, 18 hour shifts, um, but it's not shifts, it's a different pace, as in you have to embrace the 10 minute coffee break while the child is napping if you can. Um, you have to pace yourself throughout the day. It's a long term approach, not um short term so keeping all that in mind um and trying to remain positive and i think um when you're working outside the home they really focus on uh, self-development they really focus on developing your career so i think you need to turn that focus in on yourself as well if you're in a phase that you're at home and um, still prioritize your intellect still prioritize um your self-development and uh, your career um, not career but like you need a new skill set so does that mean taking a cooking class does that mean taking a first aid course does that mean taking um, a childcare course or using YouTube and self-study um, just a tiny bit sprinkle your day with um, intellectually stimulating things 
Um, I don't always recommend listening to the news because it can be very negative. Um, they don't always report on the good news stories. So I don't feel like it's a balanced news report. If And another great tip, you mightn't be able um, straight away, not to put extra pressure on, but definitely try and incorporate creative hobbies um, and new hobbies. Uh, independent like maybe an exercise class or yoga or um, a new area of um, a new just something new and that can because when you're at working outside the home you're constantly um, brought new ideas so I think you need to do that for yourself as well especially if you're like setting up your own business and you're an entrepreneur you're completely dependent and in your own bubble at home you need um new ideas can spark creativity and new ideas can bring about uh, different thoughts sometimes you need to be challenged on your um thoughts so you don't get very stuck in your way so if you like these kind of um thought rambles and thought provoking um, voice notes let me know in the comments below and I will bring you more topics and we'll create a little community here of like-minded women who want to inspire empower and uplift each other um, who are embracing the slower pace in life maybe more feminine energy spirituality as well and um, whether that's not religious but like just knowing that you're more than that there's a lot more out there in the world and community and um, let me know give me a thumbs up that helps me more than um just a view because if you're just viewing it i don't know if um you want more like this style or what style of content you like the most let me know if you found this comforting or helpful at all if you're going through this yourself did you find it relevant um, let others know how you coped spread the wisdom and some parting thoughts are the benefits of being stay at home um, there's lots of them, but the main ones are definitely attachment or bonding with children, being more flexible, you have time in your schedule if like school events come up or personal um, like parties and just uh, appointments, midweek you're more available. Um, and here's Alana with her costume. Valentine. It's, it's kind of like a Valentine's game and all Valentine's stuff. And did you get new socks, Kat? Look how cute those are. My mommy just has the muffins in the in the oven. Can't you see them? All? I know it's a little blurry. Well, I know it's a little blurry. Another benefit is that you save money on childcare costs and you save, um, if you're homeschooling, I think you save a lot on uniform and um, school lunches and all these things um, that go along with like school uniforms. Inside the home, you have more time to like look after the house uh, even if you're renting, it's like you're more, you're there, you're present. Uh, you can go get great deals. You have more time to go shopping and concentrate, like when you're food shopping, to get um, like vouchers and bargains and good deals and browse and shop around. Uh, even if it's for homeware appliances and homeware stuff, uh, you just get to spend more time. Your home becomes your workplace. So yeah, you get to really um, pour into your home and that's such a good environment for your family. You get to serve your family, um, set it up how you like and have the values. And speaking of which, I'm currently being summoned. Haven't I, Lana? Yes! Yes. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, huh?
Ooh. Who's going to clean all that up? Is that a present for Mummy? Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>